Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and thank you for being here. This is Taslima from Taslima Maya Art and today I have an amazing tutorial video for you to celebrate my 50th video on YouTube. If you're new here or haven't already, please do hit the share, like and subscribe button and leave a comment to help my channel grow and help me provide more videos for you like this in the future. Hitting the notification bell will alert you to new videos that I post up every week. So I am very, very excited to be showing you in a step-by-step -step tutorial today how I created this beautiful strawberry plant using acrylic pouring on the background and embellishment using mixed media. A big shout out goes to AB Creative who inspired this piece. In part one, I'll be showing you how to use hot glue to draw the branches onto the canvas, mix your paints, with coconut hair serum and create a Dutch ball background. For this painting I use a 13 inch diameter Arteza round canvas with a selection of different brands of paint um, from Pebio, Amsterdam, Arteza and this little piggy pigment. My colours and ratios are in the description box below. So to start off I freehand drew all the different stems for the strawberry plant across my canvas and then I got my mini hot glue gun um, mm -hmm. heated it up really high and then I made sure I traced over these lines. Now as you know strawberry plants uh, can look quite messy so it didn't really matter how good the gluing actually was. The great thing about this piece is you don't really have to be an expert at straight glue lines. Um, these can be as messy as you like. The only thing to keep in mind is thinking about the composition, how many strawberries you want on your canvas and where you might place them. So the branches will indicate that as well. Now, as this is a Dutch pole, I'm mixing my paints with water at a 50-50 ratio. And then I've mixed that up and I'm adding coconut hair serum and only one drop to each of my paints. And coconut hair serum tends to give very different cells to silicone oil and you will see what I mean when we pour. And you can see the consistency here of the green paint here, which is the Pebio iridescent green. Um, and it's very, very watery. It's pretty much what you would have for a Dutch pour. So hopefully it will move on the canvas with the use of a hairdryer or the world's smallest blower. And I've chosen these darker and lighter colours to illustrate foliage in the background. So for mm. this Dutch pour, I'm going to be using this device. This is my world's smallest blower, which I purchased on mm. Amazon when it was available. They're quite hard to get hold of these days. It's the orange one. And I bought these nozzles from Etsy, um, which was a separate purchase. But they're absolutely great with Dutch pours. I haven't done many Dutch pours, but I know that I can move paint around with them if it's watery enough. Um, and I'm going to be using one of these nozzles for this particular piece today with a strawberry pour. So um, it's the wider one. It's very narrow. It's perfect for this. Um, so these are really useful. Also, I have a Babylus mini blower, a hairdryer. Um, and this was recommended by Erica Hughes, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have a cool setting. So I'm going to try that as well. I start off by just throwing my paints down, really, in any sort of manner that I please. Um, there's no real, you know, right way to do this. So you just have to get your entire canvas covered. Um, those glue lines are now um, dry and hard to the touch um, and look great. And I'm just going to pour my paints right over those glue lines. Um, and just cover up my entire canvas. And this is definitely the fun bit. You just go wild with it, get it all on there. Um, and, you know, you must make sure there's no gaps, there's no bits of canvas on show. So here I am throwing the white down on top, um, trying to get it that kind of definition that I'll need at the end with all the intermixed colours. Now at this point, I kind of realise that my paints are thicker than they should have been. They're slightly thicker, so I would suggest adding a little bit more water, depending on your chew paints. Um, and it was pretty hard, really, to get to this point with all the paints um, on the surface of the canvas, fully covering the canvas. I used the um, hairdryer, the Babyliss one, which was much better, but I found that that didn't have a cord setting, so it was drying up the paints very fast. My studio was also very fast, so this was a little bit laborious. I think next time I will definitely add more water to my paints. 
So this is what the wet look looks like. There are some tiny little cells there. Um, it's a very interesting look, um, very nuanced. I really like it. There's lots of darker greens and some of the white and some of the uh, lighter greens mixed up there. I imagine this to be the background for everything I'm going to place in the foreground, including the leaf printing and the actual mixed medium strawberries that I'm going to create out of FIMO and um, air drying clay. In part two, I'll be showing you how to create your strawberries out of air drying clay and a silicon mould, creating leaves out of FIMO, baking and painting, and real leaf printing on canvas. So this is modelling clay. Okay, you can see it's made in it. Leaves das, the best to model your ideas. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this today to create some 3D items. Um, and I'm going to be using something like this. Now this, if you can see, I'm not sure you can see. Let's have a look. So this is, is an actual strawberry mould. Now I bought this one from a company called AliExpress. Um, and they're not as expensive as you think. You can see the little texture inside. Okay, so I've opened up the packet and I'm going to pop on some gloves quickly to protect my hands and then grab a bit of this air drying clay. I'll try and form it into a, a small ball to begin with, make sure there's no gaps or cracks in it and just really push it together there in my palms. I'm rolling it into a a spherical shape and I'm just going to try and push it into the silicon mold as best as I can. Now they are a strange shape, obviously strawberries have um, a narrow base and a kind of a wider top so I'm going to try and get these in and push it right in so it's touching the sides all around within the mold itself. So obviously for this painting I wanted halves of strawberries rather than entire strawberries um, and this mould only allows for whole strawberries so I'm going to have to take it out when it's semi-dry and cut them in half hopefully without damaging them. You can see me really pushing the clay in now mainly because the texture of a strawberry as you know it looks like it's got lots of little seeds on the outside it's got lovely texture and I want all this clay to be push right up against that texture so I can get the right look for the strawberry um, and I'm just going to do that for a while I'm going to keep pushing it in and pushing it until I'm sure that there's enough inside the mold um, for it to take on that texture on the outside of the strawberry here yeah, I'm just taking the excess off um, there's a little bit too much of the clay so I'm taking the top off I'm going to keep the top pretty flat because I plan to put some green um, sort of leafy things on the top which I think is called the hull or calyx um, so I'm going to make those as well out of some of this air drying clay um, painted green and then pop that on top I am now just shaping the side um, of the strawberry, making sure it's going to curve up and around a little bit. And then I'll be adding some texture to the top of it just in case. I'm not entirely sure whether these, the top of this will be visible once I take the whole strawberry out. Um, but what I plan to do is use a little... It's actually um, the stick of a lollipop my daughter had. And I noticed that it had a little tiny kind of hole all the way through. And I use that to try and put in the dimples that a strawberry normally has with the seeds on the outside. Um, and put that texture across the top as well, just in case I need it when I pop these out. And, you know, wh whether they're going to be um, fully shaped strawberries or not, I don't know until that happens. So I'm just going to use this to put dimples all across the top and hope they match whatever texture is inside this silicon mould. So that's the first one done and I'm going to start on the others. So I'm going to try and create quite a few, mainly because I don't really have a certain idea of how many I'm going to use on my canvas. I have put some glue gun branches on. Um, 
and I want to just see how many I can get on the canvas without it looking overcrowded. And I do the same technique really for all of them. I try and put those little dimples in um, to replicate seeds on the outside of a strawberry. As you'll probably already know, there are so many different parts to a strawberry plant. There's the crown or trunk from which all other parts come out, like the roots, the stems, the trifoliate leaves, where, you know, mm. there's three leaves on one stem, and also the runners, or stolon as it's known, as well as the fruit itself, and the flowers or blossoms as well. So I've taken the strawberries out of the mould and cut them in half um, and let them dry now. And this is what they look like. I'm now creating the little green parts that go on top, the little leafy parts that go on top of a strawberry. Um, I'm just spreading out this air drying clay on a plastic sheet and just trying to cut out the shape the best that I can um, using a craft knife. And then obviously I peel this up. Um, and with this clay, you don't need to fire it or anything. It just takes a short time to cure. Um, and you can just leave it to cure and it goes hard. Then you can paint it afterwards. With Fimo, however, which I also use later for the leaves, you do need to fire it in an oven. Um, ideally for it to get hard. Um, and you have to follow the instructions on the packet to make sure you do it correctly. Um, and I will show you that later. I can't tell you how much fun doing this piece of art was. It's It was definitely a mixed media piece with so many different techniques involved and certainly techniques I've never used before or I'd used when I was very little. I remember playing with Fimo when I was about 12 with my best friend um, sat in her bedroom. We were making badges actually out of them and then firing them in her mother's oven and uh, that was the last time I actually played with Fimo before now. So it was really quite nice just uh, those memories coming up about playing with stuff like this. I did come across uh, quite a few problems whilst making this piece, but I managed to overcome most of them. The first problem was that the mould was for entire whole strawberries, so I had to take them out delicately and try and cut them without ruining them because they were still semi-soft. Um... Obviously, I could have cut the silicon moulding too, but I didn't want to ruin it either. And here they are. I've cut them with a craft knife and waited for them to dry. It took about two days, uh, two and a half days for it to fully dry to the touch. And they're ready. And I wait another few days before I paint them. But the plan is now to paint these. And some of them look perfect, don't they? Um, some of them are imperfect, of course, as the top I had to cut off. But I'll be attaching those little green kind of... Um, bits on top anyway. Here I've mixed up some really beautiful TLP colours to try and paint them and the reason that I use pigments is because of the wonderful sheen and glisten on them. You know if you look at this one it's beautiful. I'll put the name up on the screen for you. I've just mixed that up with a bit of um, water and binder um, and I'm just painting these strawberries and this was so much fun. Honestly, you've got to try something like this. It doesn't have to be strawberries. You can do anything, any kind of fruit, um, as long as you can find a mould or you can shape it with your hands. And then I enjoyed painting these so much. It was such great fun. And no, it's not just fun. It's also very, very therapeutic to just lose yourself in doing something like this and just to lose yourself in creating mm -hmm. And to me, art is about fun. You know, that's what the first and foremost purpose of it. Having fun, enjoying yourself, you know, experimenting, seeing what works and what doesn't, learning from any issues or problems, overcoming the barriers or issues that come up, all those things, you know. And this was great fun because of so many different techniques involved. From doing one of my first ever Dutch pours to collecting leaves from our local park with my daughters and using them to print with, using hot glue directly on the canvas to create the branches, using air drying clay and a silicone mould to create these strawberries and paint them, creating the 3D leaves out of FIMO and firing them and then painting them, creating the little runners. The combination of all the different techniques and processes I think made this piece particularly exciting for me and a perfect choice for the 50th video on my channel. So they're looking almost edible and I'm going to be painting the calyx in green next.
So I have a combination of three colours. I have Viridian from Royal and Langnickel and Pebio's Cadmium Green Hue and Brilliant Green from Amsterdam. Both of those last two I mixed together for a custom colour. This part was slightly fiddly. I should have probably used tweezers to hold them, but yeah, I'll forward this bit for you. And here are my beautiful strawberries, all ready to be glued onto the canvas. They do look edible, don't they? I bought these and they're leaf plunger cutters that are usually used for cake making, um, you know, to decorate cakes with um, icing. And they're quite cool because I thought I would use them for my painting. So as you can see, they're like this. And they've got this beautiful design on them. And I was thinking of using this, these for the painting. So let's see how that goes, shall we? All three different sizes. Okay. I see. Yes, so then the queen gives the king. The next step is for me to get the FIMO, um, soften it up in my palms by kneading it, roll it out. Um, here I'm just doing that on a glass table. I'm rolling it out for my daughter's Play Doh roller. And I simply use the leaf cutters then to cut out the leaves and imprint them as well with indentations of the leaf patterns on top of it. Obviously with using FIMO I will need to fire it in the oven so I'm going to get a tray with some baking paper on top and get some tin foil, um, kitchen foil, roll it up into little balls and try and make these leaves look a lot more 3D because I don't want them flat on my canvas. I want them sort of um, shaped really nicely um, to go onto my stems, my um, glue, mm -hmm. glue gun stem that I already have on the canvas. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some tin foil, roll it up in a ball of different sizes and place my leaves on top of it and then simply bake them in the oven. I'll stop speaking so much and show you how I'll do it as most of us learn better when we watch something without distraction. I'll only speak here and there when it's necessary to explain a step. So, in the meantime, enjoy. I'll play some music for you so you can kick back and relax as you watch. And just before I go, if you're new here, please do subscribe, like and comment if you found this tutorial valuable to you. And hit the notification bell as well, uh, just so you don't miss any future videos from me. You say that something's got to give You say it's one way to live Yet you sit and wait for better days I think we must push through the gray
alternative way of planting this pool is actually make your fruit first, place it in the arrangement you want on your canvas, and then draw the stems in after you've done that so that you know where to put your glue lines. And then you can use your hot glue gun to do the stems and then paint pour over it. I could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like I wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me. I never gave the key to you. Even though I wanted to I should be trying something new But now my body's aching I'm tired of dwelling in the dark It's just that my heart can't take it I didn't know what it would cost me When I let you go I feel alone And I'm just singing mm, mm, mm. It should have been you Another time I've just laid out all my leaves and my um, strawberries on the branches there and I'm looking at the background and thinking it's a little bit too busy and the strawberries look beautiful, delicious actually and the leaves look really nice but I think the background needs to be slightly darker I'm not sure what you guys think but what I'm planning on doing to resolve this bit um, is using some real leaves so we've got these okay, so we've got these um, real leaves that I'm hoping to then use to um, print some leaves onto the background in a darker green colour okay so maybe in this colour here Amsterdam halo green and maybe mix some black up as well with that so these are the winter leaves so are kind of left over so I'm hoping to use these to print using the back of them so you can see the smaller lines um, and maybe we can just have a couple of bits of foliage in the background that, to darken that background up. Now the edges I really love, you can see beautiful cells around the edges and that green really pops here and ties in with the green on the leaves that I've made. Um, so I really want to leave the edges alone and maybe put some more darker accents in the middle with um, some leaf imprints as you will. So that is the plan, um, to use these to make some beautiful leaf imprints. Okay. Okay, so here we are. We're just going to um, start printing the leaves now. I'm just going to make sure this is the right way around. So that's how it's orientated because the strawberries will be facing down. And here on my palette, if you can see, I've got quite a few colours. I've got burnt umber here, which is Pebio. I've got um, phthalo cyanine emerald here, which is also Pebio. And I've got phthalo green here, which is Amsterdam. And then the greens here, I have the opaque chrome green hue from Pepio here. And this one is the yellowish green from Amsterdam. And here we have iridescent blue black from Pepio. Okay, so that's all of my colours. I'm going to do a mixture of them because I want the leaves in the background to be pretty dark. So what I'm planning on doing is, first of all, darkening the background up with a brush and then printing on afterwards. So I'll do the dark colour first and I'll mix them up here on my palette, some green mixed in with some dark green really is what I want to make, a bit of each colour, maybe some blue black as well, see what colour that makes, and I'm just mixing up now, I don't know if you can see that, probably not, um, if I just pop it over here maybe you can, maybe you can see it, there we go, just want a nice little dark green colour um, to put in the background in the shape of the leaf. So let's go with that colour, that seems okay. So I'll pop this back up here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these leaves, for example that one, and decide where to place it. And I really don't like all these bright greens around the middle, I'm trying to have less of that so I might just put one leaf up here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just sort of outline it. and darken that area up a bit, okay? That's the plan. I just want to check it. I'm doing it the same shape and size. There we go. Um, and as I said, these are winter leaves, so they're not the best condition 
and would have been better if I was doing this in the summer but the problem is that um, the leaves are actually smaller in the winter they kind of shrink up and they don't grow as well so these are quite small so that's the first one done I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then maybe add a few more and then I'm gonna print um, the veins on this and press it into this um, area so let's get a bit of water again make that a bit thinner I think it's drying up very quickly it's quite warm in the room here in the studio so I'm just trying to do this again I'm just gonna mix that up again there we go and let's do the next one so this is the plan I'm just gonna add a few more leaves and try and decide where they're going maybe one here would be perfect okay the other way I can do this is just put paint the back of the leaf and just press it on but I'd rather do it this way And get rid of some of those bright colours in the background there. They are a little bit too bright if you ask me. There we go, that one's perfect. I mean it doesn't have to be perfect or anything, it's just having um, that contrast in the background, Ooh, that's important. Um, it's amazing how quickly these paints dry up. Right there we go, and the next one, that one's going there. And we'll put another one I think. Oh, that wouldn't look right. Maybe here. Yep, so let's put the green on. There we go. That looks alright, doesn't it? Now I'm just going to wait for these to dry and I'll be right back after I paint the rest on. What I've done is started darkening the background with a very light wash. Okay, so as you can see, what I've got here is a very, very light light green wash and I'm just placing it in the places where there's a bit too much yellow or white so some of those love lighter greens I'm just darkening them up with a very light dark green wash and I've added the places where I'm going to be putting the leaves so I hope you can see what I'm doing I'm just making the centre darker now with the centre of the canvas darker it's time to print using the leaves so I'm going to use them as almost as stamps um, and I'm painting them lighter green to contrast with that darker green I put down and I'm simply stamping them on and making sure I'm firmly pressing them down onto the canvas there. Um, the dark colour underneath is actually dried now so you can see you can see the veins on the leaves quite clearly on the canvas and that's exactly the effect I wanted to. I think it's just a lovely extra you know touch to have real leaf prints on the back of the canvas where they'll be visible as well so there's a lot of really nice things going on with this piece. Flying awake with the sound of an emptiness you left behind Trying to sleep but the silence is haunting this room every night Oh, I wish the sun would rise and see the clouds pass by I didn't want to say goodbye to And here you, I'm using a very gone. dainty paintbrush to accentuate the lines in the leaf I don't want to close my eyes It feels like I'm falling and here I have sped up the part of where I add a lot more leaf imprints across the entire canvas, wherever I feel it needs it. Why won't they go away? Pictures of you in my head The way you left broke my heart In part three, I begin assembling the strawberry plant, gluing the different parts onto my canvas, highlighting and shading the stems, creating the runners and flowers, and finishing it with varnish. Assembling your fruit onto your pole is really a matter of personal choice and preference. You can assemble it any way you want. With these, I already had certain stems that I wanted to hang the fruit off. Um, and then there was other stems which only had leaves on so I did have a kind of plan in my head before I started what it would look like in my mind's eye 
This is another fun stage where you get to kind of move things around and see what looks good and what fits, what doesn't, um, what needs changing. So it's a very creative process really producing this piece of art. There's so many different stages where you can do anything you like really, you know, um, and you get to make choices, fun choices of where things are going to go. Breathe in the air of this morning, but it's not the same without you. Wearing the t-shirt you left, but it no longer smells like you do. I can stand to feel this way. My body's screaming out your name. I didn't want to say goodbye to you, but you're gone. So I then take some acrylic paint markers, shake them up and they're all browns and greens because I'm going to paint the branches or the stems I should say really um, and I'm painting them green similar to what real strawberry plants um, sort of look like. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that as we speak and I'm using different shades to give it that 3D quality. I also add some shadows next to the strawberries and underneath the leaves to make it look like the leaves are casting a shadow um, and that makes it even more realistic I believe. It's beginning to look really quite spectacular, I hope you'll agree. Um, you know all I need to do now really is to glue those pieces on properly which I will do in a moment. But if you look at it, you know, it's it's really stunning, isn't it? I hope you agree. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Um, I always like hearing your feedback or any suggestions of anything that you would have done differently or could be improved on. Um, but again, this is a journey of learning, of experimentation, of having fun, of creating something absolutely striking and stunning. And I feel that I really did this with this piece. I'm so so happy with it look at that strawberry it just looks like you could pluck it off the canvas and eat it it is really stunning and those tlps really made a difference i'm now gluing on my pieces um, i've decided where they're all gonna go and i'm using a glue gun for most of it but i also use some e6000 because i felt um, sometimes the glue gun glue wasn't strong enough so I use a combination of different glues for this mm -hmm. piece. And I think at one point I even used diamond glaze as well to attach a leaf onto a strawberry there. But if you notice, the leaves are all very, very beautiful and curvy. Um, so that kind of kitchen foil really did its job when I baked it. And uh, I managed to curve it around that kitchen foil and it dried or it cured very hard. Here I'm using diamond glaze, as you can see, to stick some of my strawberries onto the canvas. I think for me this piece was a labour of love. It's to celebrate my 50th video on YouTube. It's to celebrate the fact that I've got all these wonderful supporters, uh, followers, likers, commenters and people who feel that they get value out of my videos and I can't really express to you how much that means to me to know that that is the case. Um, and I have some wonderful comments from people all the time and I'm so, so grateful to you all. So this is really a way of a celebration, not just for me, but of all of you um, who are the reason why I'm doing this, really, you know, that kind of feedback. Obviously, the other reason, the main reason is because I love doing this. I love, you know, creating art, using mixed media, using paws as backgrounds for my embellishments. And I really love doing this. This journey has been amazing. Here is the piece with all the different parts glued on, but I am going to add one extra or two extra little things to it. Um, I was umming and ahhing about it for a while, for a couple of days, and I decided it was lacking something, and here it is. This is um, FIMO um, rolled out, 
into stringy bits and I'm just trying to put the um is it called a stole on um I think so uh the runners really is what I call them onto this piece and I made them very curvy just for the kind of aesthetic effect not because they really like this on strawberry plants um and I know that some parts of this painting aren't exactly accurate in the form of how strawberry plants really look but I thought it was a lovely abstract piece and I then glue this on after painting And my final touch was to create these beautiful little flowers or blossoms out of Fimo again. And I fired them again in the oven and then painted mm -hmm. the middle yellow and the rest of it white and then glued them on. And I feel that that completely perfected my painting. To finish, I sprayed this with gloss varnish. And here is the end result. I hope you love it as much as I do. I just want to say a great big massive thank you and shout out to all my fellow artists and talented friends on the Fluid Art Express with me today. And a warm welcome to my dear friend Andrea from Wearing Your Art on Your Sleeve, who is our guest artist doing a first ever premiere today. So let's go support her and the rest of the train with Venom Fluid Art next. <laughs> 